Hey guys, welcome. Uh, Dr. Bosworth and I, we have so much fun talking to one another. Uh, we we talk often actually. So forgive us for laughing because we were I, we were totally saying she's Princess Leia today with her amazing new headset. <laughs> you can tell she's a, she's a mom of boys. <laughs> oh yes. She's probably <clears throat> Jack those from one of her boys. <laughs> yep. They're like, mom, those aren't cool. I'm like, I know, but I really need the good ones. And this is the only thing that fits into that device. So I'm stealing them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So welcome keto family. We are back. We are talking about hormones again. Sorry, guys. Um, there's just a lot of talk to be had about hormones. But more importantly, this is going to be a hormone experiment. Yes, the doctor is experimenting on me. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have not had any relief from crazy hot flashes. And this is <laughs> there's a beep there uh, yeah so right if we had real producers they would you know they'd, they'd you know put the the blur over yeah. your mouth and say yes oh that's not ladylike i'm like yeah come to menopause and you deal with this yeah. <laughs> I'll, show you. I'll show you yeah it's a real thing i wouldn't mm. let the dog get near me last night i'm like don't touch me <laughs> So sorry, it's awful. <laughs> I, I, I honestly believe spontaneous combustion could be a real thing, <laughs> even though we're 90% water. Anyway, but, uh, we're going to get started. We're going to talk about um, hormones, what happens with them, um, what happens with them when you're really doing a really good keto diet. Um, we're going to talk about exogenous ketones. I've, for those who have followed me forever, I have never been a fan. Of exogenous ketones. Um, I did a little bit of experiment. I think I'm still not a fan, but let's talk about it. Let's dive right in, shall we? I think we should. Yes. You know, this is the part about when uh, chemistry meets woman. <laughs> Hormones are not your answer when you look at um, anything stable. They are going to be pulsatile and Unfortunately, the uh, journey from uh, a fully functioning ovaries to ones that don't want to work very well, oh, it's that journey in the middle that you're like, you'll be fine if I would either give you estrogen, progesterone, you'd be fine if they would stop working, period, you'd be done in just a few days, but that's well, not how it works. Let's talk about why, because somebody who's just coming in, why don't you just give me um, estrogen that my body is screaming for. Why right. are you making me suffer this week? Let's talk about that. <laughs> right. So <laughs> when we started this, uh, you know, the overall experiment back in November, you know, our goal was to lose weight and to get this extra 50 pounds off. As we flexed your body to do, to reach in and really uh, start mobilizing those fat molecules, lots of good things happened the first several weeks. You had really good ketone numbers. Your glucoses were some of the best I've seen seen and really ideal patient. Like this is perfect. You're doing great. Uh, and that all went well until over Christmas time, you got an illness. Um, and I think the gods were just dooming you, uh, because at the same time you, uh, started having hot flashes and we first gave all the credit to the infection that that must be what's making you sweat. But then the infection went away and poor Jennifer continued to suffer. She uh, she had hot flashes more and more uh, to the point where I said, I think we need to check some labs. Yeah. And hey, hey, Dr. Boss, scoot mm -hmm. over just a little bit because you're, oh, you're right. Oh, there you go. There you oh, go. Perfect. Sorry, yes. Thank you for saying that. See you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't see that screen. So thanks for telling me. Yeah. I, I've watched our videos backwards. I'm like, oh, look, I'm cutting myself off there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the keys, though, for knowing if you're in menopause is that we had some old labs from yours, and then we had some fresh labs from last week. Yes. So your brain has this signal that tells the ovaries that it is time to produce estrogen. And usually the brain gently tells the ovaries what to do, and they listen. Uh, so a few years back, you can see that your ovaries were saying, hey, Jennifer, uh, we need some more estrogen, and your body responded just as it should. But last week when we checked her labs, there was a lab from her brain that was screaming, ovaries, produce some estrogen. It's and still screaming. <laughs> unfortunately, that is the correlation with, to what's been causing these hot flashes. So, um, you know, when I look at 
some of the things that happen in menopause, if I could reverse Jennifer's life over the last several years, I would go back and just bathe her ovaries in um, ketones and uh, the supply of fat. You know, we showed a slide last week that has to do with how cholesterol, which is the fat that floats around our blood, leads to cortisol and progesterone and testosterone and estrogen. Uh, all of those are fat-based hormones. And when Jennifer was on her low-fat, high-carbohydrate, calorie-counting phase of life, trying everything to lose weight, what happened was she decreased the supply of fat to these hormones. So her ovaries did the best they could, but they couldn't, they weren't constantly supplied with an abundant amount of fat, which would allow her an abundant and easily produced, easily satisfied estrogen stream. So fast forward to now, and we now have this figured out. She's got ketones floating around her system. Uh, she's have pretty darn good ketone numbers and really has had success with her weight loss. But unfortunately, um, it is uh, a signal that her ketone numbers um, looked good. Her glucoses were pretty good, but her ovaries were not working. So I called up some of my OB people and they're not, they're not ketonians. They don't study a ketosis diet, but um, <laughs> they actually uh, ha had several questions for me. Uh, and after I answered those, I said, all right, here's this patient. Here's what I think we could do. I think we could um, use these ketones to supply, just increase the chances that the inflammation in that ovary goes down. And hopefully that ketone is a sign of that fat. With the increased fat uh, would come uh, that steady production of estradiol. The good news is Jennifer's been on this ketogenic diet for 18 months. This isn't the first week she's been starting this. So to flex the production of extra ketones and extra fat uh, to be circulated, um, there were a, a few options that we had to say, we, we might be able to see if these ovaries really return back. You know, you look at um, ob and doctors over the last, um, you know, one of my friends been, she's been seeing, we went to school together. So uh, 20 years, she's been seeing ob gyn patients, I've been seeing internal medicine patients, lots of them women. And we all agree that yes, we've seen ovaries sputter, meaning they don't do what they're supposed to, and then they come back. There's even a couple of medications like if we are treating you for breast cancer, we can turn off your ovaries and then they come back. Um, so we were hopeful that if we take Jennifer's um, situation and knowing that she is about to head over the cliff of you're going to not produce any um, estrogen if um, if I do it for you, if I give you this estrogen, then the, then the experiment's over and you'd really do have to take estrogen and progesterone supplements for the rest of your life. If you don't want to do that, um, unfortunately, the woman's brain does change when you go through menopause. So you look at the women, and you're like, oh, you should cry. I don't want to do this either. I'm like, no, 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 keep me from the edge. I don't want to do this. I've seen up close personnel, how angry, how irritable, how awful. And I'm not married to one of them yet. You know, I mean, I, I mean my husband's going to have to see this someday, but I'm like, oh Lord, that's awful. <laughs> but there's nothing worse than a waiting room full of women going through menopause, all chirping together about how we are going to make her provide whatever it takes to make this go away. <laughs> you can relate, right? Yes, yes definitely. And the sympathy from husbands has never been greater because you're like, what? They're not going to do. Oh, yeah. But in that same spirit, if if you do have uh, ovaries that are going through menopause and then I start supplying that progesterone estrogen supplement, which is that hormone replacement therapy, uh, yeah. your ovaries then don't have to do it. Your brain will kind of calm right down. Um, there won't be a signal for those ovaries to produce estrogen. So, so why as, is it as much as I want that desperately now, I really don't want to lose brain cells. So we are going through with this experiment. And let me tell you, I don't know why, but in the first part of going keto, for me, the same thing happened. I had tons of hot flashes, don't touch me, it was crazy. I don't remember, I wish I could remember how long it lasted. I wanna say maybe a month and then it leveled out. So um, I think it could possibly naturally level out or maybe I was just so keto that I really did bump up those ketones and maybe I did that myself the first time because I never went for estrogen the first time either. 
So Right. So here's the deal. When I, I wrote a chapter about this in my book too, saying women beware, you are going to experience a burst in your hormones when you go keto. And if you think back to that slide last week, by supplying the fat in a steady everyday delivered nutrient, you now have better cortisol production when you need it. You now have better estrogen when you need it, better testosterone. Even women do have that, um, you know, that progesterone. They're all upstream. It came from fat. So when you've been sputtering and really trying not to eat fat and then you dive into keto, I tell women you're going to get a period. First of all, uh, it will burst in valley. That's what happens with periods. This is from this increase uh, in hormones is from restoring the fat supplied uh, by your nutrients coming in. And it's wonderful. That's where we get that energy. That's where their skin looks looks like yours does. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is it's fat. <laughs> yes, that's fat supplied skin and the hair, it stretches longer under the stretch tests. When you look at that quality of, of health, it's very measurable. So to see you come so far and then right as we're trying to get this final weight off, the hot flashes weren't, uh, you know, then they didn't, I didn't want to check for menopause. I was thinking you were just having a higher production of estrogen because of the higher ketones that we were now checking in your blood. And that's where I was like, oh, this will be okay. It will pass. Um, and then when it didn't, and then when the lab test came back saying, holy Hannah, not enough estrogen around. And you know? then let me tell you, I was legit crying. And Dr. Boz was there with me crying, being like, she's got to save my brain. Please <laughs> save my brain. <laughs> That's like my yeah. best asset is my <laughs> brain. Save it. <laughs> you know, that that uh, idea that women can't multitask. I'm like, yeah, don't even try to analyze me. Are you kidding me? How do, how do you think we do it? Uh, of course, yeah. I have like four or five checklists in my head at all times. And um, apparently that's not the way it works after menopause. And I've heard this from hundreds of women saying, you know what, here's the difference. I had to slow it down. And I, I'm frightened of that. I like my life. And I know that as I transition into the wiser years of life, my, I call it, uh, the danger is that you can't uh, do that as well, according to polls I've taken. Anyway, so here's what we did. We said, okay, so there's a couple ways to biohack this. We can supply you with ketones. And, you know, the ketones in a can, they are, uh, they've been around since the, since the 60s. There are some uh, experiments out there that have put ketones in a can and they cost like uh, over $100. There's major, um, they're called ketone esters. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if you've heard of ketone esters, but these are actually just the bio salts that are out there. And those salts have uh, a combination with calcium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, we put them in the gut, the, the, the gut will absorb them and we can measure them in your blood. If we get those ketones high enough, it really will suppress the appetite. It will also be part of the supply chain for churning better ketones the longer they're on them. I, I use this biohack for patients when they're first going keto, especially if they're like a, a type, uh, they're diabetic. I want their body figuring out what a ketone looks like as they are going to do a shift of fuel. Um, but with Jennifer, what I was hoping was that we would get her ketones higher and her, um, her, uh, glucoses, her glucoses have always been awesome. So we don't have a lot of room to improve on the glucoses, but we wanted those ketones higher. If I could put a, a drip of fluid into her body, giving her ketones, I probably would do it because the only other way to get your ketones higher is to do an extended day fast. And that's been something where you've, you've had, it's, it's not fair to ask you to do this because here you are dealing with the emotions of high, low, hot flash, cold, sweat, cold. Um, and then we're saying now hold off on taking any of the supplements to, to satisfy that because we really want to try and resurrect the ovaries to see if they will kind of come out of this mess they've gone into. And, you know, fasting for 12 hours, even up to 16, a couple of days it's still very difficult, especially with all those emotions running around in a menopause uh, transition. So we said, all right, if it was me, I would, I would use ketones in a can first. I would see how that feels. And, um, you know, the sad part is, is that no matter what choice we do, the chances we're going to impact the symptoms uh, of estrogen production. It's, I mean, if I give you estrogen in a pill, 
I can influence your symptoms within a few days. But it's still going to be something where I say, do not tell me about your symptoms for 10 days. So I'm giving you the pill, the perfect delivery of this hormone. And I'm still telling you, you're going to go up and down for about 10 days. Uh, and maybe even longer than that, depending on how your liver metabolizes that. That Yes, I know. <laughs> so now I'm saying, no, no, no. I'm trying to get your body to, to plunge more ketones out of there, uh, more fat, more estrogen out of that uh, cycle. So and just to as understand, just to stop you for just a minute and just understand it, you're saying we could either drink the ketones in a can mm -hmm. or we can just straight up not eat and suffer, really, yeah. really suffer through emotions, sweating, and starving. And then how long would I have to starve for? Because that is seriously a consideration. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, um, you know, the sad part is, is that you would have to push that ratio. I would pulse you to 40 and then have a meal. So that's that Dr. Boz ratio where you take the ketones or the glucose, you divide by the ketones. We'd want you to get to a 40 or less then have a ketone meal and then fast again till a 40 or less. And Wait, then have a when you say ketone meal, are you talking then drink the ketones? Oh, or are you I mean, talking eat regular keto food? It's keto, yeah. Just oh, eat, okay. eat high fat food. Yep. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> yeah, I mean there the when I when I'm working with a cancer patient, um, and I, I was, I, it's hard to know how strict to be because it's just the same thing as with somebody when fasting, if I push you to a level that's too much, they say, screw it. And I'm not doing this. This is awful. I mean, you're all incredibly committed uh, and that yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. When I'm working in the clinic, <laughs> yeah. as soon as if I push them to a place where they're just not ready to go yet, then it has to be a capture from them to see, okay, I'm willing to do this. So yeah. that kind of contract, that social contract between doctor and patient, it really has to do with how well can she, uh, can she navigate all this? And you know, I've got a young mom uh, who wants the baby fat off. And I'm thinking, you're still nursing. Uh, you have way too many things on your plate. Stop. And, you know, and often I think about it. here, you've done amazing job in that last 18 months as you've navigated through the keto um, education and cooking. And now we're taking you up to this next level where you're poking your finger and you're, you know, 12 hour fasting and you're not eating with your family at night. Those are all stresses that are a change. And just like what happened with John that first few weeks where he fasted, did amazing. And then you're like, yeah. oh, wait, I got to go back to work in my life. And then there's yeah. I guess I gotta, the, the rest snowballs back in. People can make a change for that short period of time. But we're asking to say, no, I'd like you to figure this out for an, enough to get the rest of that weight off that you want off. So as I look at some of the things for Jennifer that I've asked her to do, I have said, all right, Jennifer, if you're going to have the best response from weight loss um, and have the chance that these hormones rise up enough that your ovaries kind of settle back down and go back into being the girl mode and happily ever after mode. Uh, one of the options was for her to, uh, to take in, uh, ketones, uh, supplements. So this past week I asked her to take in, uh, ketone supplements a couple times throughout her 12 hour window when she was eating. So she got up in the morning, she checked her morning ketones and her morning, uh, fasting blood sugar, and then she dosed with ketones. And she did just as she was told um, and pretty good, like within four hours uh, is how long the fuel would last. Um, a couple things that I think I should have been a lot more clear about last week was uh, she didn't, um, she took them with water. Um, so when you look at ketones, ketones are this salt. And I was saying earlier, we bind them with sodium, potassium, chloride. No, no, not chloride, sorry. Sodium, potassium, magnesium. Uh, I'm forgetting one. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, uh, calcium, calcium. There we go. Uh, so anyway, a combination of those end up in your um, in the supplement. And when people first take them, it is incredible how hard that is on their gut. So there's a similar concoction that we use to clean out the bowel before a colonoscopy. So we put this in and it just kind of causes everything to flush out and they get um, diarrhea. And when they go in for the colonoscopy, by golly, that bowel is clear because <laughs> they've been just flushing. 
So when the, when people first take a ketone supplement, uh, I call them ketones in a can. And I do that in hopes that people don't mistake it for um, the MCT, which is another way that your body can make ketones. That's a fat and it's got a special length of a fat that um, when, when you're trying to teach how can you make ketones from supplements, uh, I use ketones in a can as a way to say, hey, uh, this is a supplement that you can drink it and it will end up in your blood. But if you drink it too quick, too fast, and the first few times people do it, it will cause a flush of your bowel. So what I didn't do very good last week was I told Jennifer, get up in the morning, check those numbers and take the ketones. And she did that. And as we look at some of the numbers that she had, I, I realized about Wednesday that I didn't tell her to take it with fat. Um, so particularly when I'm mixing my ketones, if I, I personally use these, if I have to concentrate really well and I don't feel like I can, like I'm just feeling sluggish or <laughs> I've had enough caffeine for the day and I don't want to feel any more jittery. I just want the increased concentration. I'll take a, a scoop of ketones in a can, put some cream in it and put some ice in it. And the delivery with the fat, you've got these salts. So the salt and the fat allow the bowel to just not flush. It kind of allows for the pancreas to secrete uh, its enzymes. It allows that cholecystokinin to come in and uh, kind of emulsify the fat. And the absorption is much better. When I look at the blood numbers, um, so I'll have the, her check her numbers before taking it. Then she checked her numbers uh, a few hours after taking it. And she didn't get that great of a response. It just wasn't as high as I was expecting. Uh, now, either she was burning through those ketones really quickly or she didn't absorb them as well. So the next thing we told her to do was saying, oh, let's, ha let's have you take it with fat. Um, so she then mixed it with cream. And um, we have a question. Somebody is saying, uh, let's see, Robert and Melissa Steptoe says, uh, how often do you have Jennifer check her Dr. Boz ratio to see if she has gotten down to 40? Is it daily, every 12, every six, every four, what? Right. Well, it depends on what she's doing. So let's take every day, every Sunday, I start a fast and I have a goal that I will fast until I get to a ratio of 40. In my personal health, I'm trying to just ignite autophagy once a week. And that seems to be enough of a stress uh, in my life to say, okay, I go until I hit that ratio. And then I go back to a very keto, have a carnivore ke ketogenic diet. Um, but when I'm in my fasting stage, I'll, fat, I'll check my Dr. Boz ratio first thing in the morning, and then I try to check it whenever I feel a wave of hunger. So sometimes that's around noon, or if I feel like I'm going to need a salt tablet or salt crystal on my tongue, maybe it's two o'clock, I'll look. And then I try to check it before I go to bed. So if, um, if I look past over the last, yeah, say six months, my ability to get that insulin ratio, that uh, Dr. Boz ratio down has really improved. Like last week, I fasted for only 24 hours. I think it was 25 hours. And I got a ratio of 40, like 36. That's wow. the fastest I've ever done that. Usually it takes me 36 to 48 hours of fasting before I would get to that ratio. Now you're so, talking just salt and water. And water. Do you do, do, you do black I do black coffee? coffee. Yep, I do black okay. coffee. So in that case, I would check every four hours or so. I mean, listen to your body is what I would tell people to do. When we were using Jennifer's um, uh, last week, I said, all right, so you get up in the morning, you check that ratio. And now I wanted to see what those ketones did. So I would have her take the ketones and then check it at 30 minutes, check it again at an hour and check it again at an hour and a half after taking those ketones. And I really was poking myself every 30 minutes, it felt. <laughs> I've gone yeah. through a lot of strips this week, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting because as you learn about the ketogenic diet, you know, there, you you see that people are at different stages. So he that question was, well, how often would you check the Dr. Boz ratio? When I'm first, you know, advising a ketone, uh, you know, a newbie, I don't have them check it at all. I just have them mm -hmm. check urine ketone strips because I'm just saying, okay, don't overwhelm them. But if you're getting to a place where a plateau is what you're worried about, I, I would pulse you, meaning take your system to a, a Dr. Boz ratio of 40 or less. And that means you're going to keep fasting until you get there. So it's kind of, I would be checking every four to five hours just to see how you're doing. Unless you have a pattern that you know in your head, like there were several times where 
I was fasting for 72 hours and I would check maybe twice a day. So every 12 hours. So um, is, is tea, unsweet tea allowed instead of coffee if you're not a coffee drinker? That's Absolutely. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of uh, studies out there with the green tea and, you know, Dr. Fung has some really um, great experiment or uh, adventures out there where he's got some crystallized uh, um, teas that are actually specifically designed for fasting. So those are very good. Um, so back to Jennifer. So do you want to show on your little slide? Sure. Um, so if I look... Um, if, so you started out Monday with a blood sugar of 69 and a ketone of 0.9, which then gave you a Dr. Boz ratio of 77. Again, less than 80 is, is a weight loss. Um, and I think Monday at 7 a.m. you hadn't taken any ketones. And then uh, I, I don't know if you just forgot to check or maybe I didn't get that list. Um, but each morning at 730, you're taking your sugars. And I just want to brag about you. Uh, I mean, that's incredible how good your glucose control is. Uh, your body really does do a good job of the insulin resistance that you've had before. You've done a ton to be proud of that you have got that sugar down. I mean, I see a lot of sugars a week and they are never this good. So well, good I, I also want to mention that I've been doing this on the 27th of this month will be my two year keto anniversary. Yay! So, yes, I don't want people to think that I had all these problems and they just magically went away in a couple of months because I have been at this. This journey has been long for me. So let's just say that. <laughs> right. No. And you can tell your body really has, um, it's adapted. You, you live uh, with some pretty low sugars. And then when you look at the ketones, so I have the slide up here on the left and it's big. So I was, <laughs> but looking at it, I can see it um, here too. So you look at your ketone numbers, um, and you got to Thursday morning, your blood sugar was 80 and your ketones were 1.5. So that gave you a Dr. Boz ratio of 53. Again, very good for weight loss. Um, Wednesday morning, you were, you had a, a lower ketone level. And then Thursday is when, I think Wednesday is when we talked about putting the fat in, or was it Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, it was, uh, I think it was Thursday. It could have been I'm Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm not sure. Cause I'm looking at these numbers on Thursday where I said, well, I'll be sure you're checking your numbers right mm -hmm. after you take it. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's right. Cause then at one, one 30, two 30, you took it. So here's where you took a dose at one o'clock and your ketones were 1.2, your blood sugar, 68 have a, um, a ratio of 57. And then you took the ketones and 30 minutes later, your sugar and ketones weren't much changed. So mm -hmm. again, um, I, I know you, you used up some of those ketones a little bit, so they sunk to a 0 0.8. Then you went to uh, an hour later and again, the sugar's really good. That glucose or the ketones are back up a little bit. So almost back to what you were in originally, but then by five 30 that night, your ketones got down to 0. 0.6. And I think that's when we spoke again. And I said, take it with fat. Um, and then you pushed your sugar down to 47 and your yep. ketones shut up to 1.4. So that's just yes. powerful. That's like a ratio of 34. That's like <laughs> what my cancer patients are reaching for. So <laughs> that's powerful. So, I, mean, I just think it's a great teachable moment for me as a physician to say, all right, so I got to remember to say the things that I'm thinking, uh, say it out loud. They cannot read my mind and to explain why the absorption of a ketone, this is a, it's an, it's a salt. So I want it absorbed. And it looks like um, because you were so good about checking your numbers with it, we were able to see, hey, guess what? She doesn't absorb them that well when she mixed it with water. When you mixed them with the fat, you did get a better absorption. And I think you said later on that night that you were like, you were irritable or like yeah. bored, hungry and something else. I can't remember. But again, you know, the, the there are a lot of things going up and down when it comes to menopause. And to, to know that we have, <clears throat> we have a couple of paths to pick. One of them is routinely supplement every uh, three to four hours. Uh, it's going to be with a couple tablespoons of fat. And, um, and then I want every, you checking every three to four hours within your eating window, right? Right. Within okay. your eating window. Yes, 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 yes. And, you know, I think that's uh, the, 
the question is whether, which way would you like to go? Would you like to go with saying, all right, morning fasting sugars, you're going to get up and check dose, um, with ketones in a can with fat every three to four hours during the 12 hour eating window, and then not have any at night. Or would you like to try your first extended fast? And again, we're still <laughs> going to have you, I know it's not an easy decision because there's, there's, there's a hormone thing going on in the background and I don't pretend to have that answer, but in uh, those are the places where if you're going to look at the best answer for continued weight loss and then um, be able to reach for uh, a little bit of make sense of all this. The other part that I want to caution you is no change from last week is not surprising. Uh, knowing that if I had given you estrogen replacement hormone, the perfect substitute for not, you know, for women, we'd still be in the, no, don't judge yet. Don't judge yet. Um, so. Interesting. So I've gone, I've gone up 0 0.2 pounds, which it's so frustrating to have mm -hmm. hot flashes, be miserable and do everything you're supposed to and still not move. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just took my sugars before we started because I was curious because I've done everything right. And I think I stopped eating it. I think it was 330 today. Okay. I have 76 glucose and 0 0.8 for ketones, mm -hmm. which is still like not that yeah. great. Not that great. And, and you know, the, the truth is, is that your body's metabolism, as you go through menopause, it doesn't just churn out heat without a a metabolism stir. That's part of, you're going to be burning those ketones. So one of the good things when you see it sink like that is you, you're using them. Um, but to really push it to the, to keep you into that under 80 for the weight loss. Um, and then to really pulse you to see if I can get these ovaries to wake up, that would be a ratio of 40. I mean, you may end up fasting for 72 hours. Oh, I know. wow. But then the longer you do that, the better it gets, though. And isn't that just a way to make your system more efficient? Yeah. I mean, that's the same thing that happened over mine is that over the summer when I first started doing this with a few patients, um, I, I wasn't excited at all about fasting for 72 hours. I had done a six or seven, an eight day fast. I had really kind of tried and kind of looked at these like, oh, okay, I can do it. Um, but when I stepped into eight weeks in a row at 72 hours, I put forth that goal, um, as a kind of modeling behavior for patients. And then a couple of them fell off and I finished the eight weeks because here I am doing a live going, oh, that's what happens. But honestly, they learned a lot and they really did improve their health. And, and I learned a lot. So then I got done with the eight weeks and I, I noticed that, boy, I really get much better numbers. Even when I stopped the fast, I'd look at it after the one day after I'd started eating again, two days after starting eating again. And I had some of the best numbers I'd ever had. So you're right. If you do push it to a fasting cycle uh, where you're kind of pulsing down to a, a Dr. Boz ratio of less than, um, I mean, I'd push you to less than 40. Um, that would be, that, that would be doable. The other thing I would have you consider is uh, to only do one pulse a week at first, meaning you're trying to succeed at this. And if you had cancer, I would pulse you and, to, and then I would have you eat. Then I would pulse you and then I would have you eat. And when you say pulse me, you would have me fast. fast until we get to that number and then go ahead and eat and yep. then have you fast until you get to that number and then have you eat. That is mm -hmm. the, that is the, I guess the way where you don't use exogenous ketones, which by the way, taste nasty and they're expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can do this the cheap way, I guess. Right. You know, um, I, I think the world out there, you know, when people say, how do you use these? I, I have a, I'm, I'm writing an article now and I'm up to 60, just looking at the last three years, 64 research articles on different metabolic places within the body. And, and I mean, this is, you know, cystic fibrosis. This is a pre lung transplant. This is how do we flex the metabolic system? I mean, unbelievably sick people where they study if we added exogenous ketones, could we improve their metabolism?
So again, my mom with that cancer, this was one of the places where I was really nervous to tell her to take those, but yeah. we couldn't get that ratio and you, we couldn't get to the right ratio without them. And since then, now this article I'm writing, which is taking way longer than it should, but it's just because there's so much research to get my head around to be able to put the advice out there. The more I read, the more I'm like, oh, I cannot believe I didn't know that it's also been studied in this disease and that disease because they're kind of, they're not new to the market. They've been around since the 60s. Yeah. It's just that nobody really put any energy into studying them. And now that they have, I'm like, I can't, I can't keep up with all that's come out. So uh, I think the place where you use them is when you're trying to treat for an illness or like personally, I use them when I've I had a, you know, too much alcohol or just I, my, you know, my ketones went down. If I had a car fit and I feel brain foggy, uh, that's my fastest way back on track is to just pulse with that. So, so I mean, I think you mentioned, and I'm going to stop you there. You mentioned if I had a carb fit, like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is anymore. Like it's been so long. Like, I'm seriously wondering, should I have a carb fit? Like, you know, there is that thing of carb ups, there's yeah. carb cycling, there's this, have your cheat meal, you know, whatever. I've been doing this way too long. Um, there have been times where I went to a restaurant, thought I ordered the right thing, and then you can just immediately taste something. If I taste anything with sugar nowadays, I put it on my tongue and immediately get dizzy. Like I oh, am. Yeah. I am that sure. sensitive. Yeah. So awesome. I can't, yeah, I can't imagine doing a carb up or carb cycling just because I don't want to fall back into that addiction. Although I'm, I'm not saying that there aren't people that can't, I just know my addictive personality when it comes to sugar. So um, what, how do right. you feel about carb ups or how do you feel about that? So I think the cycling of carbs, it gets brought up because people set expectations that they're going to be perfect. I like to look at the ketogenic diet is how compliant are you? I mean, if I give you a medicine to take for a year and I count the pills at the end of the year, we know that the most compliant patient is still going to miss about 10% of those pills. Mm -hmm. And they'll not even think they missed any, but they did miss them. When you look at a compliance with low sugar, you have so many temptations out there that most people aren't Jennifer Marie. They don't have the skills to make those substitute foods to satisfy the cravings. They really just say, oh, I just really want that. And they, they, they blow it. But what, so, but I don't give patients permission to say, oh, you should cycle those carbs on purpose because it's kind of like when I am treating an addict for alcohol to say, oh, it's okay. You can have a beer once a week. And especially when they're newly into recovery, when they're newly into the ketogenic diet, if you watch what your body's insulin production will do in response to that sugar, it's enormous still. And you don't need to take my word for it. Check it. I've had people say, I'm sure this carb cycling is good for me. I said, okay, let's do an experiment. You're going to take that glass of orange juice and you haven't had any carbs for the better part of four months. You, you need your carbs. Ready? Here you go. So they check their Dr. Bob's ratio. <laughs> <laughs> then they put that orange juice in and they get dizzy because their mm. body's not used to it. And that sugar shoots way up. But along with that sugar, the pancreas and your body remembers, oh, this is where we squirt out a ton of insulin. And they get the fatigue and they check that Dr. Boz ratio at the 30 minutes, 60 minutes and 90 minutes. And it just soars. I mean, that isn't healthy. That is where the inflammation comes from. And most of the time, I don't need them to check their blood sugars to, to figure this out. They'll say, yeah, over the Christmas holiday, I went to this party. I had a drink there. There were sugar cookies, you know, blah, 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 blah. They'll find all kinds of ways to cheat. And they'll come back to keto group and say, you know how I told you that knee pain went away after I went keto? I can't believe within 48 hours of falling off the wagon, my knee pain is back. And I think it's worse than before. And honestly, it's probably not worse than before. They just forgot that that's what they used to live with every day. And, you know, that that's an answer to say, do I think it's recommended? I have, you know, you get these nutritionists out there that are saying, yeah, you should carb cycle. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. Not if you're really looking for the autophagy, the anti-inflammation. And your goal is to lose the weight. By adding insulin, you will just lock down fat cells for the better part of three days. And that's where you say, hang in there. Don't do that. If you need something sweet, put fat with some ketones and at least it doesn't, I mean, 
as much as you're disappointed in, you know, these uh, numbers of your ketones went down, you still have amazing glucose. That is so powerful in predicting you're going to be fine. I wish you weren't dealing with the hormone thing, <laughs> but we're here. And this is the part that's messy. Yeah. People yes. say, why is it called practicing medicine? Because there's not a handbook that comes with every problem that patients could possibly come in with. And this is a great example of that. Yeah. You know, let me, um, let me stop you for just a second. The comments are going so fast that it's hard for me to keep up and I'm missing <laughs> tons of them. Um, Laura Williams wine says, can you address the cardio workouts running and its impact on weight loss? So believe me when I, I wanted my, uh, my ovaries to produce more estrogen. And I started running all over the place. And Dr. Boz was like, no, 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 that's going to make it worse. And I was like, no, well, thank God, because that was miserable, <laughs> too. Um, but Deborah Brown also says 10 minutes of cardio and weight bearing exercise four times a week took me over the hump. It was a not a quick fix. It was not a quick fix to it. It took me a year, but it worked. And it really did the sugar from my body stores. Hmm. Mm. So again, I think what she's addressing there is the chemistry, not so much saying, can we get Jennifer's hot flashes to go away? So again, starting an exercise program in the middle of your menopause fit, I'm just saying you're going to give her a nervous breakdown. I've got her already fasting. <laughs> I've got her checking her sugars. I've got her, you know, strict on a sleep cycle, no alcohol at this hour of the night. You know, there's all kinds of limits we put on her. If we're going to add something to her life, please don't make it a running schedule. <laughs> He's yeah. still making oh, a running schedule. And by the way, and I didn't even consult you, but I had a private trainer at my house and we were doing all kinds of stuff. So I finally told him, yeah, don't come back just yet. We're, we're yeah. going to get through some stuff first. <laughs> right. And I just think that's a human answer. You're so desperate to try and want to fix it. But what, what I see time and again is you got you to gotta work with those hormones. And those hormones right now are absolutely winning for the, with the hot flashes. You know, the question I did want to hear about is how is, how is your sleep doing? I still wake up a couple of times at night because uh, of the heat. That's mm -hmm. all that really wakes me up. Yeah. Okay. So, because I, I noticed the, the morning fasting sugars for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were at seven 30. And I just wondered if that's uh, later in your day, because you're still just struggling with your sleep. Yeah, I, I used to wake up pretty early and I have been, well, what have I been doing differently? I'm probably staying up a little bit later at night. Um, yeah, I've been sleeping yeah. in later. Hey, I've got a question from Mac. And did I just stop you from saying something? Sorry. No, I'm just, no, I just wanted to make sure that the sleep is still, you got a couple times the night you're waking up, which is what I was guessing based on the data. Yeah. So Max says, what makes your ketones drop? Am I, I am pretty strict with my food intake, low, low carbs, no sugar, moderate proteins, high fat. But the last couple of days, my ketones have been 0.4 and 0.3 today. Ooh, sounds so, like body's working efficiently to burn them ketones. <laughs> so what were the sugars during that? What were the numbers? The sugars, uh, Mac did not give sugars. It was just wondering what makes the ketones drop. Well, it's the most important part about checking those two in conjunction is that the you are using sugar and the glucose and the ketones to guess what the insulin is doing. So when, when the insulin goes down, the ketones are able to circulate. If your metabolism is eating, is using all of the ketones that you produced, then that's why they're low, but your sugar will also be low. That's usually what, if you look at Jennifer's chart, her sugars are low and her ketones are low because she is using the ketones she's making. Um, if we would ask her to fast, she would stimulate the body to make more and you would see those ketones go up. I'm just a little hesitant to do that during a menopause fit. Um, when I look at other reasons, why did the ketones go down? It, it, ketones will plummet when insulin is high. So I would need to know what were max sugars. So if the sugars were above 100 or in those 90s to 100, and then the ketones were low, it would tell me the insulin is high and something stimulated the insulin. And if they say, but doc, I didn't need any carbs, then I'm going to start looking at things like, did you have sugar substitutes? Did you have, um, do you have a stress response and your body's making cortisol? Did you not sleep well? 
is there an infection that's brewing inside your body? And I don't mean some like candida long-term infection. I mean a recent urinary or respiratory or ear infection. Um, so those are some of the reasons where the puzzle is I need both numbers. It's why the, the lower your Dr. Boz ratio, the lower your insulin. And that's why measuring both of those is super important. So Barbara Jean says, how do you take ketones in a can if you are fasting? It it is only water or can we use almond milk? So um, Barbara Jean, I only take those ketone in a, ketones, uh, exogenous ketones is really what they're called. I only take those during my eating window. So on the fasting window, I'm not doing anything but water and salt. So, mm -hmm. um, right. and I've, I've been hungrier at night now that I think about that. I've been, I take the ketones during my eating window, like the eight hours during the day. And I find that I think I'm not eating enough. And like right now I'm hungry because I don't think I ate enough during the day. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that is the trick is that when, when you're looking at your volume of, of calories during that eating window is low enough. And if we can plunge and get your cells to, you know, you satisfied that, that stimulus during the day. Cause essentially what I'm doing is suppressing your appetite during that 12 hour window and you aren't eating as much. And then you're still having to do the 12 hour window where you don't eat. Mm -hmm. The overall calorie intake is lower with higher ketones and it will, it will plunge those fat cells to release fat. I mean more during that fasting window than you did previously. Uh, the other way to do that is to do a 24, 36, uh, 48, 72 hour fast. And again, it's a preference. I mean, I, th I think, uh, you know, you can skin this guy a couple different ways, but I, I like, you know, the idea of trying this. Um, the other part though, is you'll, when you read the book about grandma Rose, uh, she fasted for, you know, 40 days when she was really sick. Um, uh, and then we had a chemo, um, uh, we had to do some cancer chemo treatment at one point. During that time, the only way that we could get her ratios to be 20 or less is she would fast for three or four days, but she would have ketones in a can during that time. Um, we, we called them eating days versus not eating days. And she said she felt better on the not eating days, but mm -hmm. man, she had already fasted. She was so keto adapted. She had fasted for um, over a month. And so you just th think of the efficiency her body was at producing ketones. So by the time we were doing this pulse with those exogenous ketones, it's a different chemistry set than we're looking at. Um, maybe not much different than what you're experiencing, Jennifer, but, um, you know, being keto adapted is the key to success on how to get that pulsation and get those numbers down for, for a treatment cycle. So um, Melissa Carey says, I've had a complete hysterectomy. I'm taking nothing right now. Should I be taking something? Um, it depends on her age. So if you look at estrogen, um, if she has no complete hysterectomy, complete hysterectomy means the ovaries and the uterus are all gone. So there's nothing in her body that's making estrogen then. Um, now she, that's called menopause. She doesn't need it. But if you do a complete hysterectomy at 30 because of cancer or, you know, ovaries or endometriosis, whatever, um, that's a long time to go without estrogen and that brain will change. It does change. And, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So Renee Fuller says it helps to keep hot flashes at bay. I'd suggest talking with your doctor. Renee, <laughs> Dr. Boz is my doctor. She's an internal medicine doctor. And this is an experiment that we're doing online to share, uh, the information uh, just an experiment yeah. to see if we can't boost up ketones to get those hot flashes at bay. Because if you watch the replay of this, you'll see the reason why we're doing this is because we don't want to take estrogen um, that's not produced through my body because that will put me in menopause. We want my body to create the estrogen it needs. And we are trying to get the ketones to make that happen, I guess, in the simple way of saying it. Yeah, that's great. You know, and it's, it, I think the other part is that if, if this doesn't work, if we're at a, out a month and you're still suffering, we always have the option of that estrogen progesterone replacement. Um, those are, those are still going to be there. If we start it now, 
and there's a chance that your ovaries can reignite and produce the estro estradiol again, um, we will quash that option by putting a replacement in your system. Um, so I'm just, I think it's worth it. If it was my body, I would try it for a month and say, all right, I tried. The hot flashes are still there at 30 days. Then, then we take a, a supplement. So Melissa Carey came back and she said she had her hysterectomy at 38. And then Stacy is in the same boat. And she said she had hers 19 years ago and she's 51. Oh, see, that's awfully young. You know, you watch about the way the, the, the bones will age without estrogen. And then, you know, I'm a brain geek. I'm internal medicine and I take care of broken brains. So, you know, that's how I got into the ketogenic diet was I was looking at the fastest way that I could repair a brain injury, whether that was from a traumatic injury or a chemical injury from chronic alcohol or cocaine. Um, you know, those injuries still hurt people years after they recover. And so using a ketogenic diet has been shown to repair from seizures the fastest. And I was using this in my practice as well. But those women without any ovaries or, I mean, it's really important to ask them, they were both full hysterectomies, meaning the ovaries are gone. So no estrogen from the age of 38 on, that's awfully young. Uh, the bones will begin to age and so will the brain. And I just think that's so a yeah, it's tragedy. So Selma says, how about the thyroid hormone? I'm not exactly sure what she's asking there. Yeah. Thyroid has a lot of caveats. So, I mean, thyroid hormones are, again, pulsatile. They are going to listen to the brain. And so healthy brains make healthy thyroids. Um, but also thyroids die when immune systems attack them. So the autoimmune disorders of thyroiditis, where the body really attacked the thyroid by accident, thinking it was an enemy, and then the thyroid is gone. So what's the best way to help that immune system to not do that? Be healthy with low inflammation, low sugars, high ketones, a low Dr. Boz ratio. Um, you know, Dr. Fung has some very interesting observations with his pulse, with his um, intermittent fasting and saying, I don't quite understand how some of my thyroid patients no longer need thyroid medications. And so it's not a study that's been done, but one of the observations that I've seen as well saying two years on a ketogenic diet and the three people that we've been diligent about testing, I have lots that are that still take their thyroid hormone, but we just check it once a year. So these folks really wanted off of their thyroid medicine. And by golly, I've had three of them now just say, They've been off of it and they do not need it. They continue to have normal lab results off of their medication. So that's I don't know what awesome. that means. Wow. Yeah, been... I'm, I'm hoping to meet Dr. Fung. I'm going to go to low carb Denver, kind of hoping you go too. Um, that's where all the experts are going to be along with, well, you're going to another one, um, the metabolic um, health, health summit. summit. Yes. Mm -hmm, that's yes. Gonna be, I can't go to that one. I wished I could. Yeah. Um, you, you start looking around and there's probably one in your neighborhood. And I think that's the most exciting. It, you look at these scientists that, um, you know, the core team of those studying on the front lines are at the Metabolic Health Summit. Uh, you get folks like me who are in practice trying to make sense of this as quickly as we learn it. Uh, and it really does have... Um, a, a ripple effect throughout our country. So thank goodness there are so many of these popping up, but uh, low carb Denver is on my radar. It's a, a matter of uh, teenagers and grandma and <laughs> practice yeah. to say, where do you fit? But I hope to, I mean, I'm, I'm Mar excited. March, there's right? a, yes. There's a lot of big names going to that one and I've already got my airfare set. So I'm going, Hey, but Selma, Selma came back and said, TSH has a lot of, TSH, a lot of people don't even check. How does it change with the ketogenic diet? And then, so T okay, so the TSH and, is the yeah. production that comes from the brain. That's the message it's sending to the thyroid saying, hey, produce me some thyroid. Just like your uh, brain is screaming at your ovaries to produce estrogen, when the thyroid stops working, that TSH screams from the brain to the thyroid saying, hey, would you make some thyroid hormone? Uh, so it is actually the first lab test to check to see is the thyroid talking to, excuse me, is the brain talking to the thyroid in a normal voice, in a whispering voice, or in a screaming voice? And that's the first step to understanding uh, are, are, is there a normal feedback loop for, uh, for thyroid? 
So this is an interesting one from Holly Bell. She says, I'm 33. She loves the keto way. However, she bleeds nonstop. Um, her gyno couldn't give her an answer as to why. And she wants to know if you have any insight. How, I wonder how long Holly's been doing it. Because I know, man, in the beginning, everything fluctuates. And I just wonder how long. Right. So especially if that lining, her uterine lining had been... Um, you know, not as stimulated. Again, that human, that lining within the womb, within the uterus has, um, has a response to hormones that go up and down. And one of the most powerful responses of the ketogenic diet is that those hormones go from a little bitty, little bitty blip because they are fueled by fat. And when you come from a low fat world to a ketogenic world, you come from very low hormone levels very low responses from the system to the peak and the valleys that are supposed to happen. We call it pulsatile. It bursts up and down. That happens with a ketogenic diet. If, uh, what was her name again? Oh, Holly. Holly. Holly if ho yeah. If Holly yeah. is in those first few weeks, she's going from a little bitty uh, blip and then it will get higher and then it will get higher and then it will finally peak and valley. So if she's several months, like I'm talking six months into the ketogenic diet, and I mean, she sounds like she's positive about it, but I, I want to make sure she's really in ketosis. So she's been making good ketones. Her Dr. Boz ratio is nice and low. She's got low insulin. You shouldn't be bleeding at six months. Like the bleeding can be a mess for a good six weeks, um, but then it should be responding to a menstrual cycle and then a pause and then a menstrual cycle and a pause. And that's what the woman's body looks like when the hormones are hardy enough, are full enough to have that uh, cycle. Awesome. Well, if you guys found this valuable, we would appreciate you sharing this out. Um, just to share with anybody who might be struggling with their hormones. We do these talks every Sunday. I seriously enjoy talking uh, with Dr. Boz about all geeking out about all the science behind the ketogenic way of life. Um, I tend to do pretty good cooking with it, but I'm not so good with the science stuff. So I'm so happy to bring her on. And not only that, you would be amazed. We have some of the strangest conversations. <laughs> there, I mean, we, we talk offline also, but there is nobody else I would like to talk more with than you about orgasms and crying at the same time and how that how crying hysterically and orgasms look on a brain chart exactly the same like <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me correct you a little bit there so in a brain of a boy and a brain of a woman if you look at a functional mri and you watch what do their brains do uh you know you can do lots of things but uh the the response a woman has when she cries hysterically is very similarly looking to when a man has an orgasm. Yes. So married couples out there, the next time she's bawling and you have no idea why in your mind, just sort, she's going to be reset after this cry, just like he's reset after an orgasm. You just need to let her finish like in many ways, but for the crying, let her finish. <laughs> I'm a brain geek, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. And, yes, and, I, I, love and it. I take care of lots of women. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. So, um, do we know what we're going to talk about next week, or are we just going to wait, well, wait, wait? Okay. So you can't, you can't do that yet. So I want to okay. know what do you think the right, what is your, what do you think you should do in this next week? Are you going to continue with supplementing with some? Uh, exogenous ketones? Are you going to say I give up on that, or are you going to say I want to? I'm going to fast. Where do you? Where do you fall? Well, I think there has to be a mental um, buildup to a fast. I so agree. I think that's a little too early in the week for me to say, especially when I'm hungry right now. <laughs> um, I could see me attempting to do um, a fast because. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm so funny about like taking medicines and putting things in my body that just aren't natural. And I kind of feel like the exogenous ketones things are just, I don't know. I've never been a fan. I do take them. I do get a, a rush, but then I just, I feel weird. Like I feel weird. And I mean, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a okay. tough one because fasting 
for 24 hours is kind of scary to me too. But um, the hot flashes are even scarier. So, <laughs> so it's a terrible thing to put you on the spot and say make a decision. So I think I think that's worth with just letting you mentally reflect and say, okay, so the pros and cons are that you have, first of all, you have options. You can just say throw the towel in or start estrogen replacement therapy. Your labs would support that. You can say, I want to tr continue to try to augment the exogenous delivery of ketones. We're going to make some better rules by saying, take it with fat. It's really obvious that your system did absorb it better with that. We'd want you taking it every three to four hours during the 12 hour window. If you're struggling with hunger at the end of the day, we'd want that lat like at 430, take another dose just to give you that extra mm. ketones right okay. before into the evening. Um, and then knowing that if you get hungry throughout the night, that salt is going to be a really good antidote. Be careful about that. <laughs> you got some. I saw it's that. It's <laughs> right here by my hand. If you haven't noticed, I've been popping one in my mouth. <laughs> you poor thing. I'm so sorry. Uh, the other options are to say, all right, if you want to fast, I think you should like set out that you're going to fast to a goal of a, a ratio of 40 or less or pick yours. I mean, if it's 50, that's fine too. It's 60. There's 40 is the part that correlates with some of the other science that's out there as far as a glucose ketone index. Okay. But um, so 40 is what I would recommend. But if you say, okay, I can't do that. I'm going to go to 50 or whatever. I mean, you've already got 50s out there. So I don't think you'd have a tough time getting that. But so those are if I if I start fasting, my text to you or my box <laughs> to you might get a little uh, <laughs> R-rated or something. I don't know. <laughs> now, Renee Fuller says she'll be my fasting buddy. You know what? That's not a bad idea, Renee. And if you are you in the low carb inspirations group on Facebook, because um, if you are, I will find you. And <laughs> if if you are, tag me. Because I, I think I really do need a buddy. And that is the group, just to be honest, that's the reason why I created that group. There's 175,000 people in that group now. You got to go to the group, Low Carb Inspirations plus Keto Friendly Recipes. It's the only group that has, I think, 175, 176,000 people in it. Um, my husband and I manage the group. We have many um, volunteer moderators that help us. Um, it's the most positive keto group on the internet. Um, if you're in there, please tag me because I might take you up on that buddy thing. I, I could probably use one. <laughs> yeah. So if those, if for those of you out there just starting the keto diet, if you're looking for a beginner's guide, this is the book that has the best teaching in it. For, I mean, from my perspective, I just do a good job of if this sounds confusing and you're like, what's the Dr. Boz ratio? What are they talking about? This is advanced. This is an advanced lesson. If you're a newbie, start with the book, start with the audio book. Um, those are great places to begin for just getting your mind around what we're talking about here. And just to let you know, we put that book in the show notes here. I highly suggest you get it. I actually just loaned mine out to a friend this week. You really? can loan your book for two, 14 days. So um, she's probably going to get it. I bought three extra, sent them to friends. Like it's really good information. Um, each chapter gives you um, a lot of different information that you'll find that you'll go back on, especially there's a chapter you did on autophagy, which I've found that I've gone back many times for, which is fun. Yeah. But yeah, I get the book. It's, it's um, a really good read. It's inexpensive. It also supports Dr. Boz in um, helping to just spread the word of the ketogenic diet. So, yes. Yeah. Well, as usual, this is one of my favorite hours of the week. So thank you, Jennifer. We'll look All forward right. to next week and you text me with trouble. Sounds good. Good night, everybody. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.